It seems like just yesterday that the endorphin speed to number one came out. I guess time really does fly when you can't leave your house. Let's talk about the endorphin speed number two. And before we get into this, I do have to let you know, I purchased it with my own cold hard earned Canadian Monopoly money. And I've done four, five runs in this shoe so far, totaling about 20 plus kilometers. I think we're just over 20 kilometers in this shoe so far. So let's get into it. So on paper, this is nothing more than an upper update. And in upper update, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. We want changes to the midsole. Otherwise, I'm not gonna go pick it up. But guys, the changes that they've made to the upper here, they're, they're not little. They do make a big difference. Is it for the better or for the worse? That's what we're gonna talk about here in this review. But before we get into all that, let's lay out the specs of this thing. It's an engineered mesh for the material in the upper. Has a little bit of a you know, piece of fabric or something for a pull tab. We'll talk about that in a little bit here. The midsole is the exact same as the version one. So you're getting 35.5 millimeters in the heel, 27.5 in the four foot four and eight millimeter drop. You're still getting that power on PB midsole foam that we sew so much a door that I dream about on really good nights. That's what I dream about, I'll tell you that much. And sandwiched between that Power Run PB midsole is a nylon plate. And on the outsole, you have carbon rubber. Now, how do all those specs roll up into a package that is the Endorphin Speed number two? So the upper on the Endorphin Speed number two is literally the only change between that and the version one. But they made a massive difference to the overall feel of the shoe just with these upper changes alone. A while ago, I said in the Endorphin Speed, what I need is a little bit more stability because I do pronate. My non-elite weakling ankles definitely feel like I'm wobbling all around in the endorphin speed. But I'm happy to say with just the upper changes alone, they've really fixed that. So let's take a look at what they've done. What they did here is add a little bit of a different implementation to their heel counter. So it's still a little bit rigid. The first one had a little bit of a rigid heel as well, but whatever they did to the back here really makes it feel like your ankle lockdown and heel lockdown is just so much better than in the version one. It feels refined. It's a refined, mature, type of upper on this thing now. And what that helps do is so I'm not wobbling around when I'm out there running. At first, when I put this shoe on, I had to put on version one as well because I just felt that the stability was so much better in the heel. I thought they made the heel platform just a little bit wider in the midsole, but they didn't. I did the measurements. I took up my measuring tape. And although I am just a little bit of a software engineer, I do know how to use a measuring tape. And even if I didn't, I put them up next to each other and they looked the same. So the changes that they've made through the heel collar and ankle collar here have made a big, big difference. And in addition to the heel counter changes, they also added a, a little piece of fabric that really just enrages me. It seriously enrages me and I don't think, I can't take it anymore. I'm sorry you had to witness that, but that pull tab just really, really enrages me. And I forgot to mention that the weight of the endorphin speed number two has gone up by a little bit, but actually once I remove that pull tab, it's essentially the same weight now. So it comes in at 239 grams, version one comes in at 238. So if you want them to weigh the same, cut off the pull tab. And essentially what the rest of the upper changes are, are a little bit more of a structure change. So they've added some overlays and all that stuff. And what that has done to the upper of this thing is made it just refined. That's the best way that I can put it, is this upper is much more refined than on the version one. The structure that they've added makes it so that the upper is not laying directly on my foot. And that honestly does help with the breathability I've found. I've been using this on pretty hot and humid days and my feet, they haven't felt that bad, honestly. And from the, when I put on version one and have version two on the other foot, you can really tell that the upper changes they've made are fantastic and they haven't added any other weight except with the pull tab. But like I said, just cut that off. It looks a lot better as well. So overall, the upper changes they've made are exceptionally positive and I'm so happy they didn't completely this up. So the midsole guys, like I said, it hasn't changed. It's still the same power run PB, the exact same stack height, the exact same nylon plate. But like I said, with the changes in the upper, the ride of this thing has changed a little bit for me. It feels like a bit more of a stable platform. And what that allows me to do is use this shoe at all sorts of different paces. Yes, the version one was very versatile, 
But like I said, I overpronate, and at slower speeds, the version one was just not the best for me because I was rolling all around with my spaghetti ankles. But with version two, I have a little bit more of luxury with it. I can take it out for my daily training runs. I can take it out for my speed day stuff. If I wanted to use it for a race, I definitely could. The downside is I definitely wouldn't use it for an easy day, but if you can only afford one shoe, this could still be used for an easy day. I just personally have better options for easy days. The reality is the midsole in this thing is the same fantastic, responsive ride that you're, you're getting in the version one. And for those of you that haven't tried the version one, what it's like running in this thing is extremely smooth. So the rocker that they have here, they call it speed roll technology, and that's essentially just the curvature of the platform here. That allows for a very smooth gait cycle. So a gait cycle is your foot strike when you're rolling along, it just feels fantastic. The heel to toe transition is very smooth. The Power Run PB midsole is not soft, but what it is, is responsive. It compresses and then gives a lot back. So you're not losing a lot to the foam. In some shoes, when you're compressing the foam, you're losing a lot of energy in it and it just doesn't feel great. It feels kind of sloppy. But the Power Run PB foam, when you give, it gives back. And what I have noticed is in my 100 miles in the inversion one, my heart rate is lower for a given pace in the endorphin speed versus something like a Pegasus 38. So just a run of the mill daily trainer, my heart rate is always lower for a given pace in the endorphin speed number one. I don't know if it's because the shoe just feels better, so I rate of perceived exertions lower, therefore my heart rate's lower just because I feel like I'm not working as hard but there's something to this midsole and I absolutely love it. The midsole on this thing hasn't changed and that is fantastic. What has changed is the lockdown, which has changed the ride of the midsole for me personally, but I'm so glad that they didn't change anything else. On to the outsole. So the outsole in this thing is the exact same. It's the same carbon rubber we're getting in version one. And in version one, I had absolutely no wear on the outsole and I have well over a hundred miles in the thing. So that's fantastic. Thank you, Saucony, for not changing that up. Some people do say that the traction isn't that great, but for me, I honestly haven't had any real issues. I've run in the damp, I've run in the snow even, I've run on ice, sure, on ice, I'm gonna fall over in pretty much anything. You can give me a trail shoe, I'm gonna fall over. But the durability of the outsole and the performance has been stellar. I have no complaints. Thank you for not changing it, it's, it's great. And I just noticed I have something odd on the outsole here. Probably should have cleaned the shoes, but oh well. So should you buy version one or version two? In the reality, if you don't have any issues with pronation and you don't care about the stability of your shoe, go save money and pick up the version one. However, if you're like me and you do struggle with pronation and all that different type of stuff, I truly do feel that the changes that they've made to the upper have improved the overall stability of this thing. So. Keep that into consideration when you're looking to buy version one or version two. Version two seems just that little bit more stable. And in terms of value, there's not many shoes that really compete on the value front with the endorphin speed. Like I said, this thing can be used for daily training runs all the way up to your racing. And if you can only buy one shoe, it can even be used for your easy day runs. But for me, I just have better options. I love the Nike Zoom X Invincible, for example, for my easy day runs, but if I needed to, I could pack this one shoe and go out for a whole month on a adventure and I'd be fine with just this one shoe. So in terms of value, I'm giving it a big thumbs up. So overall, the changes that they did make to the endorphin speed are fantastic. Thank you, Saucony, so much for not just messing up this shoe like so many other shoe companies have done. Thank you. The improvements you've made are exactly what I wanted, even though I didn't know that it would be an upper change that would ex make them happen. So you worked your magic and I'm very happy and appreciative. All right, guys, thank you all so much for making it to the end of this video. Let me know, are you gonna pick up the version two or are you gonna stick with the version one? Get it while it's on sale. I think it's down to 170 Canadian dollars right now. So it's a great value, great, great value at that price. It's great value at 200 Canadian also, so yeah. It's perfect. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end. I will catch you on the next one. Remember, we are all runners, no matter how fast we're going. Just get out that door.